Good afternoon, AI nerds, and welcome back to Orlando, Florida. We are in the last two segments of what has been an absolutely thrilling day here at Click Connect. My name is Savannah Peterson, you're watching theCUBE. I'm joined by the fabulous Shelly Kramer. Hello, Shelley. hello. Shelly, my gosh, I feel smarter than when I woke up this morning. I think you do too. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's always a life goal, right? right? Every day get a little smarter. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like we've really gotten to do that here at Click Connect. Very excited about our next panel. All the way from Brazil, we've yeah. got Beatrice and we've got Marcos. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. Thank yeah. you for having us. We're, it's our pleasure. Okay. End of the day, you both have huge smiles on, which is refreshing to see. Are you having fun this yes. week? Yes, <laughs> very. Definitely. Yeah, we, and we definitely. are very passionate about our project, so we like to talk about it. We're always happy talking about it, even though it's a grim subject, but it took us so long and such hard work to put it together, and we're very proud of it. Well, it is, it is it, grim is one thing, but it's, it's incredibly important, potentially yes. life-saving and so much. Yeah. Beatrice, tell us what you're working on. Well, we have brought here to the event uh, the National Map of Gender Violence. It's a platform that unifies uh, the majority of public information and data on violence against women in Brazil. It seems like it's something that should already exist, but it doesn't, especially because Brazil is like the US, it's a federative country, so all the states have their own rules and their ways of collecting data and storaging it. So uh, my organization, which is the Avon Foundation in Brazil, along with the Brazilian Senate, represented by Marcus, we mm -hmm. partner up to put together the most comprehensive and um, up-to-date uh, tool so that public uh, officers, uh, activists, researchers, all sorts of professionals can access data with quality and with, well, I think, I would dare say even stunning visuals. This is very important. As important as having yeah. good data, it's telling a story in a compelling way. So this is what we're bringing here. Uh, Brazil has a staggering numbers of violence against women, but it's not that easy to find that information. So that's our contribution and we hope to keep working on it. So what are some of those figures? What are, what's that data say? Well, one of the data is actually produced by one of the researches conducted by Marx's team, was a national survey on violence mm -hmm. against women that estimates how many women above the age of 16 go through some sort of domestic violence in throughout their lives, and the estimate something along six to seven in each 10 women in Brazil mm -hmm. over 16 yeah. experiences. Uh, domestic violence throughout their lives. And of these women, most of them, uh, six in each 10, do not report it to the services. So this is something that we have brought with the map that's very important to shed a light on. Uh, even though it's such an important topic, it's still treated as a private matter, not as a public health, security, justice situation. And that's something that it, you can find it at map. So how do you connect this? If you have this huge number of women who don't report this, or maybe not even know that they can, how do you, how do you gather this information? How do you collect this information so that you can share it with the public and, and help women know that they're not alone? How, how do you make that happen? The map has two kinds of data. There's data from administrative sources, which means there are the data that comes from public services that were attended by women who already have searched for some kind of help. Okay. But there's also the data from the National Research yeah. on Violence Against Women conducted by Marcos, he's the responsible for it. It's a survey with a very representative number of women across the country where they ask about their experiences and if they went through violence. That's the proxy we have to the the size of the social phenomenon. So that's how you can measure up the the, the estimation of the, the, the problem in our country. Okay, and this collects data from uh, health organizations, justice organizations, public safety organizations, um, any any other sources that, that inform the survey that you yeah. do, Marcos? Yeah, we, 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 we do this survey all uh, it's, it's two years we do a survey okay. with this woman, this woman's in Brazil, by cell phone. So we do a questionnaire, a long 
it's also a 50 minutes questionnaire, and we asking questions, dedicated questions, but they answer very well. We, our, our team are very well trained, yeah. so we can collect a, a lot of information from this way. And also we have uh, data from Justice from Brazil. From right. About the process that are involving violence against women. But getting this data is very complex. I was yeah. literally just going to ask how <laughs> yeah. you're yeah, getting it, can't, it and it can't if, possibly if, be Because easy. now yeah. it's done, it's, it's it sounds... Digital. You can't send a mail, like a paper survey to someone who yeah. might, you know, I'm right. not going to look over your shoulder and see that you're talking about yeah. the Okay, violence. so tell yes. us about how you make <clears> this the happen. The national survey, it's a tracker, like Marcos mentioned. It's been done every two years since 2005. It's the longest in wow. its kind yeah. in, in the country. It Impressive. even informed yeah. our national law on domestic violence. Oh, wow, that's, that's considered great. one of the th one of the three best laws on the subject in in, in the world. Brazil has very Amazing. creative and innovative ways to addressing, but it doesn't mean that is actually reality to most women. We're such a big and an equal country, mm -hmm. so it's very difficult to deliver act and to have an impact in people's actual lives. So the data that we have, they are very complex. Some of them are accessible in uh, formats that only scientists, data scientists, or statistics can comprehend. They're there, they are provided by the Ministry of Health, for example. Uh, some of them are provided by uh, the Senate themselves, mm -hmm. so they, they are owned by the the partners of, of the project. And some of them actually required, the most difficult one was the one from the public safety uh, sector that came from the Ministry of Justice. It actually took us years to develop an institutional relationship with the Ministry of Justice so they could have a term of agreement of cooperation with the Senate and they could give us access to this data set that no one has ever seen in the country. So we could catch a glimpse of the data on violence against women, but there's a whole world on the data on crime and public safety in Brazil that nobody has ever seen publicly. So it, it's a, a feat, you know, it's a technological feat that's very important to us, that's why yeah. we're here, but it's also an institutional and political feat yeah. because it takes so many people, so many teams, and so much work and political work, convincing mm -hmm. political leaders that data is important for public administration. Yeah. I was I was going to ask. So, Marcos, what is the the buy-in like at the government? Are people supportive of the project? Did it take time? How how is that? How do you get support for a topic for both for data as well as for a topic that's really important? But like you said, grant. Yes. Uh, well, the government. In, in federal state, they support this yeah. effort a lot because we, we have a legislation uh, prepared some years ago, and it, we are enforced to do this kind of survey of of study of this project like this. So, uh, and the politicians, sen the senators, in my case, mm -hmm. they are very interested, interested in in this topic. Also, uh, they always ask questions and use this information to think about public policies. Yeah. They, yeah. When you talk to them, when you reach these people, they are fully on board. But the difficulty is actually getting to them. Once we get to them and we show the project and we show what we had in mind, they are fully on board. When we launched the map last November, it was launched inside the, gap, the cabinet of the president of the Brazilian Senate. With the, pre with the presence of the ministry of then Ministry of Justice. So this is how important- That's incredible the visibility. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the yeah. leaders and authorities uh, right. found the project. But still, we have to knock on doors and explain every time because yeah. it's, not, uh, it's not that disseminated in the public sector, right? The data culture is not still uh, in, the, in the level of development we wanted it to be. Well, I think that that's true everywhere, right? I mean, yes. we understand the power of data because we're data nerds, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think that that is not an uncommon thing. My question is, click technology is playing a role here. Yes. Would you share with us a little bit about how this click power technology is, yes. is playing? Well, a, a the role? Senate 
is a click uh, a consumer, and it, yeah. and it actually has many panels with click, okay. and is a heavy user of click yeah. technologies. Uh, when we started working on the map, it became clear that click was a very good solution for us because we had two main challenges. One was, how do we manage all these data that come from different sources in different formats and they are public and of a sensitive matter. Right. So we have to be extra careful with them and we have to follow all the privacy and ethical, um, rule, not only rules, but um, uh, tools that are uh, available to us so we can be very correct yeah. with the use of this data. So this was one challenge and Click is very robust in that sense. Okay. It gave us the, the safety that these data are well storage, they are well unified and that give us a sense of trust. And the second challenge that we face is how to make it accessible and visually attractive because we don't want data to be that reserved really for matters. us, well, data it's nerds. Really easy it's to really understand. Matters. Yes, yeah. we want other people to fall in love with data because yeah. data, it's not the end in itself, it's the means to citizenship, that's yeah. how we believe yeah. it. So, in Click also with embedded features allowed us to have this robust architecture and structure, but also showing it, and, and, and it was important because it's hosted by the Brazilian Senate's web page. Okay. So it has to follow a key visual, yeah. and even and you know how visuals for bureaucracy usually is. Oh, yeah. So, but still, with Click and embedded features and our partners at Cluster, we were able to create a very beautiful uh, visual setting, so that's that great. was very interesting. Well, and the other thing too, when we talk about data security and data, data privacy, there's certainly nobody here who's going to say those aren't big deals. Yes. But when you take, when you extrapolate it out to what you are doing, it truly is data privacy and data security can be a life or death exactly. situation for the women who are involved here. Like there's no room for error. So, you know, there, there's a certain amount of stress that comes with that, but knowing that you're working with a vendor partner, and that's one of the things that's impressed me so much about Click is that, you know, they've been baking security as exactly. foundationally for decades. So this is not a new thing for them. And I think that that trust and that confidence that you have in yes. data privacy and, and that's security. fundamental right. for social impact projects, yep. but specifically also for mm -hmm. uh, public users like the Senate. They yeah. have to be sure that is uh, according to all the rules and stipulations. Yeah. So that we found that with Click and we're very happy with the results. But we always stress that the map is not finished. We believe it, it it's an ever evolving yeah. platform. And we want more partners. We have other sectors. We are hoping to get them on board. Mm -hmm. And I can't even tell them you yet because you know it's institutional sure. sewing of relationships. But there are so many uh, possibilities and we aim to be the most comprehensive platform on violence against women in the country and also to inspire other countries that have the same problem, unfortunately, worldwide. Yeah, I think, I, first of all, you're already in, so I'm sure I speak for Shelly and I, you're inspiring us sitting here on the stage, so you're doing great. Are you, you mentioned there's a data set of crime, uh, well, past crime that has never been made public before. Yes. Are you hoping to visualize that as well at some point, or to pull out? Well, that? we already did for our theme, so oh, sweet. One, one of the things that the map delivered, not technologically, but politically and institutionally, was the, a, a glimpse into this data set, data set of um, the public safety department inside the Ministry of Justice regarding violence against women. And that has opened a precedent, right? Because now other areas of social importance can knock on the Ministry of Justice's door and say, we want to see what we can find from the data that by, of the system that has been made available, but because we have a good relation and because it's the Brazilian Senate, yeah. that has to be said, yeah. we were able to put together. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so are there, Brazil is certainly not the only country with this kind of challenge. Violence against women is unfortunately common on a global basis. So are you, um, do you know of any other organizations beyond what you're doing in Brazil that are doing similar things? And, and, and if the answer is no, 
that actually gives me hope in that I hope that we can help share awareness about this kind of initiative because we need this in so many other places, mm -hmm. you know? And to be able to springboard off of your great success here, I think would be great. I'd say that in our ecosystem, there are players that are very worried about access to good data and the existence of good data because not always they are registered. Uh, but how to present them, and especially data viz, I, I personally, I don't feel like that's such a hot topic yeah. in our country yet. And that is as important as having good data and Equally. Being able to rely it? on it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise yeah. people don't understand what you're talking about. You don't have the impact. So perhaps you... half of the story in our ecosystem is covered by a lot of interest. And But we are trying to be advocates in that way. To say is as much as important as making sure the data exists is making sure that people know they exist and access them and they are used to make informed decisions. Because in the end of the day, this is what we want. We want to use data to create a better world for women in our case. But I, I think it's fair to say that everybody benefits from a better world to women because if you're not a woman, you're, you're the child of mm -hmm. a woman yeah. and you have women you care about and you love. Yeah. And what we always say is that feminicides, the, the killing of women because of the fact they're women that related to the gender, is a crime that's completely preventable. It, is. it shouldn't have happened. So we believe that we are halfway there but there's still a long way to go. And other Latin American countries, my organization is also located in other Latin American countries, are interested in doing something similar. And we hope that maybe next year or in the next few years, we can bring a Latin American experience. But we also know that the US and Canada do not have anything right. remotely similar. Yeah. So it's not only a South American or a Latin American problem. Right. Well, I hope that you're paving the way for other countries to learn and, and model themselves after you, what you're doing because it's incredibly in, in, important and inspirational. Thank you, Sally. It is, and hopefully, hopefully we see some of that data come down. We see those numbers, those yeah. statistics come down from what it is. I just want to thank you both for what you do every day. Thanks well, for fighting the good fight. And thank you, because thank you. as important as, as doing the work that we do is uh -huh. communicating it. Yeah. And th this is what we learned as well, right? Working with communicators and spreading the word because yeah. we can have the best platform, the best yeah. project. If nobody knows about it, nobody uses it, <laughs> then what's the point? And we hope that you will stay connected to us and keep sharing some of your progress because we would be honored to help continue to share your story. Thank 100%. Okay. Count us in. Okay. All right, we're all in. Well, then we'll see you back here okay. soon. Marcus, Beatrice, thank you so thank much. You. Shelly, fabulous as always. And thank all of you for tuning in to our power-packed day of live coverage here at Click Connect. We're in Orlando, Florida. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.